This is the history of space flight and space technology. I'm Andy Chaikin. This is week 10, Skylab and Apollo Soyuz. After Apollo ended, NASA was looking ahead to mostly towards uh, building the space shuttle, which had been approved in 1972. But uh, one other program was on its agenda before the shuttle would be built, and that was a space station created from spare parts, leftover hardware, uh, from Apollo. Now, originally, NASA had planned on an entire program called Apollo Applications that would use Apollo hardware for things like uh, bases on the moon and astronomy satellites, missions, uh, manned missions to do science, and a space station. Uh, in the end, that all got pared down to just the space station part, which got renamed Skylab. Um, here's a, a bit of cutaway art that shows the space station in its uh, flight deployed configuration. Um, it's a very clever design. It's built inside a third stage uh, booster rocket from the Saturn V. Or if you're talking about the smaller Saturn 1B, it's the second stage of the Saturn 1B. It's called the S4B. And um, this was a rocket that was about 22 feet in diameter, a uh, tremendous amount of room when you um, took out the interior plumbing for fuel and oxidizer and so forth. And so basically what they did was they constructed uh, the space station inside this S-4B booster. Um, now, at the front end of this booster, on the, on the lower left part of it, as you can see in this drawing, they added a couple of other uh, modules. Um, one was an airlock that would allow astronauts to take spacewalks from the Skylab to go outside and um, do things like retrieving scientific film. The other, thing, the other uh, module at the uh, lower left end of the station is called the multiple docking adapter. It has uh, several uh, docking ports, uh, one of which could be used by the visiting Apollo crew. And uh, then you see um, attached to that multiple docking adapter a large structure uh, called the Apollo telescope mount. This was actually a, uh, an astronomical telescope used primarily for looking at the sun in wavelengths that cannot be viewed from the surface of the Earth, like X-rays and ultraviolet. So um, this was our first space station. Uh, the Soviet Union had already launched a space station, space station called Salyut in 1971. They'd had a three-week mission that ended in tragedy when the uh, cosmonauts were killed um, by a malfunctioning air valve in their Soyuz spacecraft. But uh, this was uh, the first U.S. station, and it had an enormous amount of, of room. It had uh, as much habitable volume as a small uh, three-bedroom house. And uh, the beauty of it was that because you could stick this thing on top of a Saturn V, basically substitute the normal third stage of a Saturn V with this Skylab station, you could launch it completely assembled and ready to be occupied by astronauts. Uh, we'll see some uh, views inside Skylab that'll give you a little more feel for uh, what it was like inside. But I also recommend for um, not only Skylab but Apollo Soyuz that you take a look at the McNamara book, which has quite a lot of good information in it about this. Here's the first team of astronauts that was sent to Skylab. They spent 28 days in space uh, beginning in late May of 1973. The guy in the middle you know from Apollo 12, the, the uh, moonwalker and Gemini veteran as well as Apollo veteran Pete Conrad was the commander of the first Skylab crew. Uh, with him were two rookie astronauts. On the left is a uh, 
medical doctor who became an astronaut named Joe Kerwin. And on the right is Paul Weitz. And um, together they uh, would be the first team of astronauts to activate the station and uh, live in it and evaluate it and perform a number of different scientific experiments. The second Skylab crew uh, was uh, led by Conrad's Apollo 12 crewmate, Alan Bean, who you see on the right there. His uh, crewmates were uh, two rookies, uh, Jack Lausma in the middle, and um, Owen Garriott, uh, a physicist uh, astronaut. Uh, there was uh, each Skylab crew featured one scientist astronaut who was uh, considered the uh, the main guy for uh, scientific experiments on board. Although the other two astronauts did their part for uh, scientific experiments as well. Uh, the Skylab. Two crew uh, spent 59 days in orbit in uh, the summer of 1973. Finally, we have the third crew who spent a record, of, well, all of these were, were records at the time. Uh, they spent 84 days in space beginning in mid November of 1973 and coming home in early February of 74. This was an all rookie crew Jerry Carr, Ed Gibson, and Bill Pogue. Um, of those three, Ed Gibson was the scientist. He was a solar physicist before he became an astronaut. Now, here is a picture of the Skylab space station on the pad on top of its Saturn V booster, sitting on pad 39B, one of the two uh, Saturn V pads built for Apollo and it's ready for launch in the spring of 1973. In the background you can see the Saturn 1B rocket for Pete Conrad's crew and that is pad 39A which is also sized for the Saturn 5 but the much smaller Saturn 1B rocket uh, could only be used on that pad by building a little, uh, well not so little, building a metal platform that was called the milk stool informally and uh, as you'll see in a minute uh, the Saturn 1B actually lifted off from the top of that support structure. 